The votes are in and the delegates assigned. Who were the biggest winners and losers in last night's New Hampshire primary? And where does the race for 2020 go from here? For analysis, Connecting Points, Ray Herschel sat down with political consultant Anthony Signoli and American International College assistant professor and chair of political science, Julie Walsh. The big surprise, at least before Iowa, was Buttigieg and, um, and Amy Klobuchar coming in second and third, um, and Elizabeth Warren coming down so far in the ticket. Um, it's not too surprising that, that Sanders won. He won in 2016 big, but I think the surprise is, is how poorly Biden and Elizabeth Warren did. How much trouble are Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden in then? Are their campaigns in, in serious trouble in terms of uh, possibly winning their party's nomination at this point? I think that um, Elizabeth Warren is in, is in pretty serious trouble uh, at this point. And Joe Biden has to win South Carolina to, to remain um, viable. And his argument to uh, attract support was that he could win with the type of voters who voted for Trump, uh, the white working class. And to do so poorly in Iowa and New Hampshire doesn't help that argument. So I think a big question is, uh, will African American voters take a second look at um, these other candidates, these top three candidates now, and um, put their support behind one or all of them? Tony, as I understand it, some of the latest polls indicate that uh, Joe Biden is even losing support uh, among black voters now, among African American voters. Uh, if that's the case, uh, how can he turn this around? That's the thing, you know, exactly on target. South Carolina is really the litmus test for him, as important as Super Tuesday will be. When you add in all those states, Massachusetts, California, Texas, et cetera, he's got to win in South Carolina because he said he was going to win in South Carolina, because he said he had African-American support, that he said, that others have said, that pundits have said, that Klobuchar and Buttigieg can't attract. That's the other piece of this now. Can Klobuchar and Buttigieg move into those uh, areas and get those kinds of votes. This is very, very do or die for Biden, South Carolina, and Super Tuesday. So is the dynamic of the race changing in terms of the uh, the Democratic voter now and what they're looking for as a possible candidate who could defeat President Trump? It is somewhat, and I think that that statistic from the exit polls in New Hampshire that close to half of the voters made up their mind in the last mm -hmm. few days is really important because I think that could happen as in Nevada and South Carolina as well. Uh, so it's a really fluid race right now. And we had three candidates recently drop out. Uh, Deval Patrick today, yeah. uh, Michael Bennett and Andrew Yang yesterday. Um, what's your take on Deval Patrick? Uh, he got in late after saying that he wouldn't get in, uh, and he's out now uh, after New Hampshire. Uh, what, do you, what do you make of, of his candidacy and, and uh, his getting in the race at such a late time? It, it, it was um, perplexing that he got in so late, and I think it just made it very difficult for him to, to gain ground. And given that he's the governor of a neighboring state and he wasn't mm -hmm. able to gain ground in New Hampshire, I think he just just made the decision to get out. Do you feel that Val Patrick uh, is, might be under consideration as a possible running mate for one of the Democratic candidates uh, down the road, uh, or is that uh, out of the question now? I don't think anything's out of the question, but so much will depend on who that candidate is and mm -hmm. what they're looking for. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really hard to, to, to predict that at this point. Why don't I get your thoughts, too, on uh, Michael Bloomberg mm -hmm. on his entry into the race. Okay, he's avoiding the first four stops, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and South Carolina. He's putting a lot of money uh, into Super Tuesday, some of those big states. He's got uh, organization, he's hiring people. Uh, he opened an office in, in Springfield. Yeah. How do you see Mike Bloomberg in this race, Tony? Is he a wild card? Is he a, a you know, potential contender? He's a potential contender, and he's more than a wild card. Totally unconventional race, and that's exactly what you need to do to try to be the nominee. If he can become the nominee, and to beat Donald Trump, it's got to be nonconventional. It's got to be your own game, a special strategy that works that hasn't been used before. Like Obama in 08, like Trump in 2016, that's what Bloomberg's thinking. 2,100 paid staff already, and good point by you, Ray. He's already opened an office in Springfield. When was the last time we saw a presidential candidate open an office in Springfield, Massachusetts? He's contesting, as we like to say in my side of the profession. He's going in. He's made, If you live in our neck of the woods, you've either gotten two to three pieces of mail, depending on what level of voter you are, how often you vote. From Michael Bloomberg? That's amazing. 
This is the big money. He's in at $320 million already spent as of today. One last quick thought on him that's interesting, how he impacts the race, whether he wins or loses. He's spending $20 million to register voters to vote. He wants to register half a million new voters. And not just register them, but get them to the polls on Election Day, even if it's for someone else. Wow. Uh, as Democrats leave New Hampshire now, as the candidates move south, uh, who do you feel uh, is best suited for the long run? Which candidates uh, have organizations in place, have the money coming in uh, to make it through the long run, through a Super Tuesday, through March, and even further? Well, I think obviously Bernie Sanders, he's, you know, the presumptive mm. front runner, and so he's he's in it for the, for the long haul here. Um, and then I, I think, you know, it's so hard to to predict this until we see what happens in South Carolina and Nevada. If, you know, if, if Joe Biden were to win in South Carolina, and then that, that changes the dynamic and who will stay for the long haul. I think it's going to be really interesting to see with Buttigieg and Klobuchar, they're going for a, um, a similar um, ideological group. And uh, if they both stay and it's, it's the two versus Sanders, there's a, a potential for them to split that vote. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all um, shakes down. Well, in the first two states, in Iowa and New Hampshire, not a lot of diversity. I think Iowa's 90 percent white. New Hampshire's mm -hmm. almost 94 percent white. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've got a di different demographic going south now. Um, is Amy Klobuchar, is Pete Buttigieg, who haven't done particularly well with African-American voters in polls, uh, are they going to be able to up their game and, and get some of those uh, black votes? Well, they have to up the game. And a lot of it won't be what they, they just they themselves do. It'll be who their surrogates are, who they can get to endorse them that makes a difference in South Carolina. And it's not necessarily, or in Nevada or in some of the Super Tuesday states, and it's not necessarily that just be someone who's an elected office. It can be a minister. It can be a community leader. I think you're going to see that from the Buttigieg camp and Klobuchar. They're on the ground. And I'm noticing that a lot of those conversations they're having are with community leaders or activists who can move two or 3,000 votes and bring credibility to their campaign within the African-American and within the Hispanic Latino community. Is there a definitive front runner in the Democratic race now? I know Bernie Sanders, uh, you know, won New Hampshire. He's coming out of New Hampshire. But is there a number one front runner at this point in the race, or is it just simply too volatile and too close? I, I personally would say it's too volatile and too mm -hmm. close, but I think that Bernie Sanders has been dubbed the presumptive front runner um, at this point. But I, I think that a lot is going to depend on uh, what happens with um, minority voters in Nevada and South Carolina. If they coalesce behind one of these three candidates, mm -hmm. that is your front runner. If if they don't, and it 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 then that is um, going to create a race where it's it's a lot more muddled. What are you looking for now as uh, the race shifts down south and we move forward? Can Bernie Sanders clean the slate on Super Tuesday? Can he do well enough looking at what poll projections are right now? And can he continue to raise, and he obviously can, money from all those folks out there who have, he's raised so much from, the average being $18. Bear in mind, you can give now up to 1000 your spouse up to 2000 you can contribute to his pack for $2,500. he has got a, it seems, no ceiling on the amount of money he can raise. What are we looking for now? Who can afford to stay in the race? Elizabeth Warren is an economist and a very smart lady. She's going to know she may not have the money if she doesn't have some victories very soon in the next three weeks. So watch it narrow. Watch it become something else, too, where you see some of the senior statespeople of the party start to step in, and not necessarily the head of the DNC. Watch Barack Obama and a few others start to say, David Axelrod, David Plouffe, this isn't working. We've got to figure something out, or Donald Trump will be president of the United States again.